In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you ways in which you can open or close a scene by using a circle where it expands or contracts. Let me show you a quick example of one of them and then we'll show you various techniques to accomplish this. So the easiest way to do this for an opening scene is to use a transition. We'll show you a couple of them and how they work differently. I'm going to click on my transitions room. I want to make sure I have my settings to all content. And then the first one I'm going to look at is wipe center. So I'll just type the word center in the search in the upper right. And here's my center. Here's my wipe center. I'll try that and click and drag it down and put it in. Then we're going to see how this does it. It opens up. Now this happens to be a rather fuzzy circle. If that's what you like, that's the only option for wipe center. If I want something slightly different that's not circular, I'll take this center one, replace it with that, and this will give me the same effect, only it will be a different shape. It will be my diamond. Now there's some other ones that you can use as well. You could use one called star. I'll t look for that. We'll replace it with that. And this is the perfect circle again. It's a star. And another one that you have in your list will be heart. And these are the ones that I found. I'll take this and replace it here. And now we have a heart shaped opening. Now the one that I prefer would be my wipe center. That's the most traditional. It's just a simple circle, but it's fuzzy. So if I go back to the center in my search and go back to the wipe center and replace it again, we're going to see that I have a circle, but it's not sharp. What if I want a sharp circle? We'll deal with that in a moment. Now, when it comes to closing, you can't use these on the closing because they only expand. They do not contract. What can I do then? There is one that will contract. If I go back to my search and type in mirror, press enter, I can use the mirror at the end of the clip. And now we're going to see this will close it down. But you notice what the shape is. It calls it a mirror because it has this kind of glassy shape to it, this glassy sphere. Now what if I want something that's just simple, that isn't distorted? So for either of these, I get several different options, but none of them is exactly what I want. Now I can use them, but what's another alternative? Let me give you another option. You can use a mask. So I'm going to click on my clip and then I'm going to click on the edit button. Drag down to use my mask designer. Now I'm going to take a mask. I'll take a circular one. Let's see, do I have oval? Here's a perfect circle and I'll click on that. Now what I want to do is I want to minimize my visual of this. We're going to keyframe the mask. So we're going to start at the very left to start the mask out in virtually invisible. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to make it as small as I want. First of all, I need to put on some grid lines. I'll use a two by two so I know where the center is. And then we're going to shrink it and reposition it. right at the center. So now my mask is in the center and it's virtually invisible. It's as small as I can possibly get it. I'll set a position keyframe and a scale keyframe. And then I'll move in where I want it fully uh, visible. Let's move here and I'll put, set those values again. Now it's identical. Now we'll make it large. And in this case, we're going to minimize my vision again. So it's kind of in the center, but now we want it to be the entire movie. And so we'll try to approximate where we have this large enough so it expands equally. 
and there we have it. I'll click on OK. And now that I've applied the mask, when I play this, it will expand in a very sharp circle from beginning all the way to the outside. The other nice thing I can do if I click back on my mask tool is I can control the speed at which it expands simply by moving the keyframes. If I move them closer together, it will be faster. If I move them farther apart, it will be slower. Now, that's the mask, but there's a limitation to the mask as well. If I click on the OK button, I've got the mask. What if I want to do that for opening and closing of the same clip? Well, I can't put two masks on the same clip. If I have the opening mask on my clip, I can split the clip uh, where I want it to close. Let's split it here. Do, do Control T to split it. It will inherit the properties of the first part. So now that I have it split, what I'm going to do is change the mask properties. So I go back into my mask designer. And we're going to minimize this again. It inherited the properties of the mask, which is huge. So what I want it to do is start there. So I'm going to click a position and scale value for the mask. I'll go to the end of the clip where I want it to be shut. We're going to change our mask scale to, down to zero on height and width. And then we're going to make this larger here again so we see where it is. And we'll have it shrink down toward the center. It's hard to grab it. I'm going to have to make it a little bit bigger. And then move it. And then move it down to zero. There we go. Click on OK. So now, because I've split the clip, I can apply a separate mask to the new segment. When I get to the last segment at the end, it will shrink down to zero. That's the second way in which you can customize this to be a sharp edge circle, both for beginning and ending in your clips in CyberLink PowerDirector.